Today I'm in downtown Battle Creek and we're going to explore some of the history of the United Methodist Church, one of the older churches in downtown Battle Creek. And they recently did a restoration on some of the historic stained glass windows that were installed in 1908. So come along and join me. The history of the First United Methodist Church in Battle Creek began in the spring of 1833 when the city of Battle Creek was still in its infancy. The first meeting of the Methodists was organized by Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Thomas in their home near the territorial road crossing of the Kalamazoo River. The initial group disbanded in 1834 after the death of Daniel Thomas, but another group began meeting on the Gogwak Prairie, now known as the area of Lakeview, led by a Reverend Thomas Wiley, who had been appointed by the Ohio Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church. In February 1836, a class formed in what is now downtown Battle Creek and absorbed the society with the Gogwak Prairie, becoming the permanent Methodist church in the community. It was led by a Reverend Asa Phelps, who preached the first sermon by a Methodist minister in Battle Creek that same year. For the first eight years of their history, Battle Creek's Methodists had no permanent home. The members were served by itinerant pastors that traveled village to village preaching, eating, and living with church parishioners as payment for their services. Meetings were held in members' homes and the village log schoolhouse, which was once located at the present site of the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. In 1841, Randall Hobart was the first full-time local pastor. The congregation purchased property and constructed a wood frame building across the street from the present day church on the site now occupied by Battle Creek City Hall. It was the first house of worship of any kind in the village. The church cost $800 to build and had two doors on the south side facing Michigan Avenue with the pulpit and choir at the north end. At the time, it was the largest hall in the village and was rented to the local school system for use as a classroom. The building also provided a public place for many prominent lecturers to speak, among them abolitionist Horace Greeley, who spoke against slavery in 1854, and Dr. D.O. Lewis, a famous temperance advocate who spoke at the church in 1859. His speech is cited as having sparked a temperance movement among the women of the church in Battle Creek. In later years, Dr. Lewis credited the start of the nationwide temperance movement to the women of Battle Creek's First Methodist Episcopal Church. By 1859, Battle Creek had grown to 5,000 inhabitants, and they voted in that year to incorporate as the city of Battle Creek. Just as the town had grown, so had the membership of the First Methodist Episcopal Church. The little frame church building was no longer adequate for the needs of the congregation's 185 members. In 1858, they obtained Mackard's Point, the flat iron, triangular shaped lot across the street, the site of the present church building. A new brick church building was constructed for approximately $20,000. At the time, it was the most expensive church in the Michigan Methodist Episcopal Conference. When the Methodists built the new church, the old 1841 wood frame building was purchased by the Second Baptist and moved to a site near East Michigan near Elm Street as a place of worship. The new church was dedicated in the fall of 1860. The sanctuary was entered at the west end by two separate flights of steps with the pulpit and choir located on the east end. The large room seated approximately 600 people at the time it was the largest auditorium in the city and it was decorated with gothic details. An organ was added in 1870 at the cost of $4,500. A tall steeple roof of the church could be seen from all around the city, but it caused a great deal of trouble for the congregation. During storms it was a frequent target of lightning and collapsed at least three times. One incident resulted in the death of a cow grazing in the pasture across the street. For safety's sake, the church's steeple was eventually removed. The steeple tower's four-foot, 2,000-pound bell with a six-foot rope wheel told the deaths of Presidents Lincoln and Garfield, celebrated the end of the Civil and Spanish-American Wars, and was used to announce the 9 p.m. city curfew for youths around the age of 16. 
1901, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument was dedicated at the intersection of Main Street and Marshall Street, now called Michigan Avenue, and South Avenue and Division Street. The five-corner intersection became known as Monument Square. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument today resides in McCamley Park. Here you can see it pictured from the time period over the years with the five street intersection in front of the first United Methodist Church. By the end of the 1800s, Battle Creek had grown tremendously and the membership of the congregation had tripled. It was decided that the Methodist population of the city was sufficiently large enough to support more than one congregation. So several other churches over the years were open, including the Maple Methodist Episcopal Church in 1890, and the Upton Avenue Methodist Episcopal Church in 1894, among several others. Even with the additional churches, it became evident that the 1860 church building was too small for the congregation. In 1906, during dinner at the home of Alice and Laverne Robinson, owner of a local department store, L.W. Robinson's, it was suggested to Reverend Patrick Mavidi that a new building be constructed. Mr. Robinson agreed to donate $10,000 as an initial gift to start the fundraising campaign. After much debate, it was decided that the new church would be built at the same location. Wilbur Thoburn Mills, an architect from Columbus, Ohio, who also designed the Battle Creek Central High School, the Bluefield High School in West Virginia, as well as the Columbus Metropolitan Library in Columbus, Ohio, was chosen to plan the new building, whose total price would be $65,000. To keep the cost down, the pipe organ as well as the bell from the old church were used in the new building. After the 1860 building was raised, some of the fluted cast iron pillars from the 1860 building were also reused and can be seen in the basement of the present building. The final service in the old Gothic building was held March 8, 1907. That included the church-wide dinner, a reading of the history of the Methodist in Battle Creek, and many toasts, non-alcoholic, to the past and future of the congregation. The cornerstone of the new structure was put in place by Alice and Laverne W. Robinson, September 9, 1907, with a large public celebration. The cornerstone contained a sealed copper metal box that held the history of the church, copies of local newspapers, the Albion Conference Bulletin, a letter from Japan written by the granddaughter of Reverend Aza Phelps, a list of church officers, and a list of all the contributors to the building fund. The Italian Renaissance building was officially dedicated at 10 p.m. September 27, 1908 by Bishop John W. Hamilton. Many of the local churches canceled evening services so that their members could join the celebration as the Methodist new structure was dedicated. The new church was considered very innovative. The main sanctuary and two-story sanctuary annex could be divided by a large retractable wall which could be cranked up into the ceiling. With adjoining classrooms, whose walls could be also rolled up, seating could be provided for more than 1,200 people. The city's many public streetcars brought church members to the Monument Square front entrance. The 1908 church became the center of many secular and community activities including Sunday school classes, women's leagues, Boy Scouts, and girls' brigade groups. In 1912, the circus came to town and walked their elephants right through Monument Square, right past the Methodist Church, as you can see in this photo. The stained glass in the church was installed in 1908, shortly after the church opened. Some of the funds for a few of the windows was raised by Sunday school classes. The stained glass windows were produced by the Flanagan and Biden Wegg Company in Chicago, Illinois, and they were recently restored in 2021, which we're going to discuss more about later in this video. The church clock faces were blank until 1911, when the congregation was able to afford the cost of installing the clock. During World War I, the church extended its outreach programs to include the Lonely Doughboys stationed at Camp Custer. That included Sunday night suppers at the church three times each month. The camp was built west of the city at one time, stationed 60,000 soldiers. Many of the city churches welcomed the boys and invited them to their homes after church services to make them feel less homesick. 
1959, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was invited to speak at the church. Dr. David Evans, the church minister at the time, had attended seminary with a friend of Dr. King. On March 20, 1960, the famous civil rights leader and clergyman gave an evening Lenten series sermon at the church. It was the only time Dr. King gave a sermon in West Michigan. The church sanctuary was filled to capacity and loudspeakers were set up in the chapel and basement so additional people could hear the sermon. Dr. King greeted people after the service and had a small dinner at the church parsonage before returning to Atlanta, Georgia. The church was threatened by demolition in the 1960s when a highway expansion was being constructed to connect I-94 with Division Street. The choice was given to the congregation to remain at the site or sell the church, the land would be used to construct a hotel or restaurant. The vote was cast to stay. The Soldiers and Sailor Monument was moved to McCamley Park to clear and widen the road for increased traffic. The church celebrated its 150th year anniversary in 1983. To commemorate the sesquicentennial, they planted a pine tree in front of the church, which was donated by some parishioners. During the sesquicentennial church service, the metal box had been extracted from the 1907 cornerstone and was open and the contents were displayed along with other history displays about the church to celebrate the event. In 1995, along with the installation of an elevator for handicapped access to the sanctuary, the congregation approved a plan to renovate the church and build an addition on the east side of the building. The addition contained offices, meeting rooms, a nursery, and a large entrance atrium and expanded parking area. All of this was designed by local Battle Creek architect Larry Reiser, who was also a church member. The new addition was dedicated on May 17, 1998. During the same period of time, Michigan Avenue was closed off between the church and the city hall, creating a park-like setting between the two buildings where the city flagpole was moved. When the church was built originally in 1908, the tower had a large finial on the roof, not a cross. In the 1920s, the finial was replaced with a large cross made up of multiple light bulbs and the whole cross rotated on an electric motor. In the 1940s or 50s, a plain tubular metal cross was placed on the tower. On February 12, 2011, a new fiberglass cross was put in place. It was donated by the estate and family of a longtime church member and here are some photos of the time when this new cross was installed, along with an aerial view of what it looks like looking at the city of Battle Creek from the top of the tower. On Sunday, September 26, 2021, the stained glass windows were rededicated after having gone through a several month process of being cleaned and restored. Of the 54 individual stained glass windows in the church, some of the larger ones were recently restored by Solstice Art Incorporated in Chicago, Illinois. The large balcony window depicts John Wesley, an English theologian, evangelist, and founder of Methodism. Another large window depicts Christ, symbolized as the shepherd, and the largest of all the windows, the sanctuary window depicting the ascension of Christ stands over 20 feet tall and this window was restored in 2013 by Full Spectrum Glass located in Colon, Michigan. I attended the rededication ceremony and toured the church and had the opportunity to speak with the owner of the company that helped restore the windows for the 2021 project. As a side note, I at one time in my own history had owned and operated a professional stained glass company down in Atlanta, Georgia for a period of 15 years and I sold the company in 2001. So I had some enjoyable time speaking with the owner of Solstice Art Source from Chicago at this rededication ceremony, sharing adventure stories about our experiences in the industry and restoring and caring for large windows. It was my affinity for the art of stained glass as a whole which drew me to want to attend the rededication ceremony and create this history video on this historic Methodist church in downtown Battle Creek. Okay, so I'm with Emily. Emily Carlson. 
and you're from Chicago and you do res restoration of stained glass windows around yes. the country. Yes. So she just recently restored the historic Methodist Church's windows here, did a cleaning on them. Tell me a little bit about that project and how it went. Well, it was not small. They are large windows and they are plated. Uh, a plating essentially is where there is a layer of glass that is attached in certain areas to the front or back of okay. other areas in order to offer shading and modify color saturation. Wow, so you took the windows down and you took them to Chicago? Or we did, do yeah. Okay. Wow, so they, these windows are well-traveled. They went yeah. to Chicago, they got cleaned, yes. restored with some new trim work as well? As well, needed. in our studio, each of the panels, uh, each of the windows has nine panels, mm -hmm. and a panel is an independent autonomous section Right. that combines with the others to form the complete window. Okay. So we removed each of the panels, created them up, took them to Chicago, and in our studio, each panel, each panel was fully disassembled. Okay. So all of the different glass pieces were taken apart, and they're held together with lead in the traditional old school way. Right. It's a, about a thousand year old tradition. Right. And so the lead was deteriorated, the solder junctions were fractured, there were pieces of lead that were somewhere missing, some had been modified, and we discarded all of that old lead. Wow. All the glass pieces were then cleaned. Some of them had to be uh, reattached, mm -hmm. they were broken, so we retained the, mostly, uh, as opposed to replacing broken pieces, right. we were able to use an archival epoxy to okay. retain the broken fragments and glue it back together. Nice, okay, and so then they, they were all kind of put back together Reassembled. New lead put in where needed. Yes, and reassembled with new historically accurate matching profiles of lead games. So how much time did that take to do the project? You know, I actually tallied just over 1,600 hours. Wow, that's a lot of which time. Is, it is a lot of time. And you do work all over the country? You know, mostly in the Midwest region. Okay. Um, we're based in Chicago, of course, so we do work in Illinois, Indiana, a little bit Wisconsin, and more and more into Michigan. Okay. Uh, we've been in New York State for a number of projects and uh, certainly open to expanding and moving around. Thanks for talking with me. I will put her information at the description of the video. So if you guys are interested, if you have projects in your community, you can reach out to her. And definitely did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking care of some of the history here in Battle Creek. Solstice is very proud to help out where we can. It's about helping the people, and we do it through the windows. You, you do a great job. The First United Methodist Church has a long and storied history that spans over a century and a half in the city of Battle Creek. Today they remain an integral part of the community and they're very proud of their historic building and the legacy of the many members of their congregation that have celebrated and worshipped in its space over the many years. Much of the history that I presented in this video comes from an article written by Kirk Thornton. There's a considerable amount of history that I was not able to to have time to fit into this video, so I highly suggest that you reach out to the First United Methodist Church if you want to know more. The complete article was provided in the Anniversary Celebration Historical Booklet that was available at the Stained Glass Windows Rededication Ceremony, and I'm sure copies of the booklet can still be obtained through the First United Methodist Church, so I will include their website link in the description of this video if you want to reach out to them for more information. In closing, the building itself is an imposing historic landmark right at the gateway to the city of Battle Creek and has piqued the interest of tourists and visitors from around the country for over a hundred years. The church today remains very active in the community and has long been a dedicated and vibrant part up the history of Battle Creek. So that's going to do it for today's tour of the stained glass windows rededication at the First United Methodist Church in downtown Battle Creek, one of Battle Creek's most historic buildings. And they've just restored the stained glass windows. I hope you enjoyed this tour and met a lot of great, wonderful people today. A lot of smiling faces. They're very happy with their church and this project and what they do for the community. So if you like today's video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe so you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell for notification. That way you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And feel free to share this with others. I will talk to you later.
Down in the valley to 